Hey there. In this video, we're going to talk about the citrus greening disease, show you what brings it and what damage it can do to your garden. So come check it out. So here I am in front of four of our citrus trees and we've recently ripped them up and wanted to show you why we're deciding to rip it up. There is a little bug called the Asian citrus psyllids and it has um, a disease with it called the citrus greening. So unfortunately, once the agent, the citrus psyllid brings the greening disease to your citrus plant, there is no cure, so you have to rip it up. This pest has been found everywhere, wreaking havoc in all of the south of the United States. It's all over Florida, Alabama, Texas. It goes all the way to California and Mexico. So these are the citrus psyllids, these little bugs. Uh, not the eggs, those round eggs are actually a caterpillar for a butterfly, but those little white looking things way over there. And they'll cause the leaves to curl, they lay their eggs on the fresh leaves. So although we don't like that it's doing this to our trees and we had to rip them up, we decided to leave some of them in pots for the caterpillar. See, look at all these eggs. The greening will give you this weird dye back. It'll also leave this waxy dew substance. Oh, there's a good one. See, that's the eggs. So whenever you see that and this uneven coloring your your citrus has the disease and there's no return from it so you have to just rip it up so we decided to rip all of them up and we're going to keep them in pots some of them although it looks like it has fruit it's not going to hold it and if it does it might be dry and just won't be good so we're going to go around the garden and rip up the rest of them and then we'll show you what we're going to plant in place of them. Here we have our red finger lime. The tips all have this dye back. It's had this one fruit on it for like four months, I think. A long time. And it's starting to flower again. It had a whole bunch of flowers, but it never held anything, just that one. So today we're going to rip that up and replace it with a mango. Here we have a kumquat in Bougainvillea. And it has the fruit on it, but we know it has the disease because it has that you see the sand already, the eggs, and dying back. This is the red navel orange. And you can see it has the blotchiness of 2019. When we got the oak trees cut, this tree actually got knocked all the way back and we had to regraft it to itself. This is a Persian lime. See the same thing. It had some fruit, but it dropped them all. This disease, it whenever it goes, it eats the roots of the plant, so it'll never recover. You just have to remove it. But now, the mame has much more room to grow. This is a ring for lime and it has caterpillars. So we're going to keep it on the side of the house. And this is a seedling orange that also has caterpillars. So we're going to kill those two. It's a grapefruit. And 
And this is the Valencia orange. This is the Satsuma orange or mandarin. This has been planted most recent and purchased most recently, so hopefully it doesn't have it yet. So we're just gonna put it in a large barrel. What we're gonna place in the hole is this world's best mulberry. On your citrus tags, it's gonna have a date on them, and that date tells you when it was the last time that it received a soil drench. The soil drench is up here, the ISD, that's a midicloprid soil drench. So it lasts about six months, you can see. So every six months, these citrus plants have to be drenched through their soil with this pesticide, and it kills and controls aphids, white flies, as well as leaf miners. Of course, the psyllids that transfer the greening. This soil drench is supposed to be done every six months. So looking at this one, looks like it's, we got it just in time. We realized what it was for. So next, we're gonna show you how to apply the soil drench. This is the um, soil drench that you can use for your citrus trees to get rid of the, um, or prevent the psyllids from coming. It's a soil drench you have to do every six months to about a year. So we moved the Satsuma to a pot. A nice big pot and we're just going to give it a soil drench. So the pellets he's putting in just acidify the soil. Remember where we got this? No. Oh, Home Depot? It was either Home Depot or Lowe's. Label says for every inch of trunk diameter to do four ounces per gallon. So we'll just go with four ounces. Here we have the Satsuma Mandarin. We have its tag, and we already went ahead and made a new tag. We're gonna go ahead and log all of its dates. So we're in May 2023, and it's got its first dunk. Okay, so here we are now in front of the citrus graveyard. We're gonna remove these from the property and throw them away this weekend. So with that, we learned um, make sure that whenever you're purchasing a citrus, if you want to purchase a citrus, make sure that you're looking at those dates because a few of those dates were already expired before we bought them. So I guess nurseries don't know to really check up on the, um, the dunk dates on those. Um, we would also recommend keeping it in a pot because we typically don't like to use any um, pesticides in the garden and that would be the only thing that's receiving any pesticides. So if it's in a pot, we could remove it, like do it on a concrete and drench it. Also, I read a few things about that soil drench and if it'll hurt the, um, the butterflies, and it says it won't. So the ones that we are keeping in a pot just for the butterflies, we're going to continue to drench just so they have their food. So in the garden, it's all about learning new things and you would never learn things if you didn't try. So there's no regrets with the citrus and hope we learned something from it. Hope you can learn something from it when you're growing your citrus and hope you go out and plant something. See you in the next one.